Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hi. Thanks for joining me again. My name's Rick Alvarez, and this is Cut the Tape, and today... Today I'm cutting the tape on a few things. So last time we compared uh, Planet X to X Transbots to Mastermind Creations. Three different third party companies. And we talked about the different types of packaging, the different inserts, how they were packaged, and the pros and cons to each. So this time I thought, well, let me compare something on the scale of Masterpiece from a third party to uh, an official hashtag release. So I got a couple things here. And this is the DNA design, um, DS01EX Susano. Uh, this is basically a masterpiece version of Bludgeon with a very samurai S style, kind of like the, I think it was Revenge of the Fallen had a bludgeon that was done in this style, which there's several kits for that, and that eventually got remolded into a Megatron, and I think Overlord for, for Botcom. So this is a masterpiece version of that. And then, um, uh, well, this is pretty new. Let's, let's do this. We have uh, masterpiece uh, Target Master Hot Rod. So we'll compare and con contrast the two. So why don't we start with our DNA design. And then, if need be, we've got a Planet X figure we can open. Alright, so let's start with our DNA design guy. This has been out for quite some time. I want to say this has been out for about two years. So, let's cut the tape. First impression of the box, it's very stylized. It's, uh, it's original artwork. It's not uh, a picture uh, of the toy it's, that has a Photoshop background. The back of the box, uh, very artistic in its design. My only thing looking at it from like a marketing point of view is that it doesn't have the actual true colors of the toy. This is a very faded image of the toy and this is in black and white. It's very nice, it's a very silky uh, feel to it. And again, the uh, letters are embossed. We see that a lot in um, the Mastermind stuff. So it's a plastic tray. Oh, it's a plastic tray with a cardboard background. Interesting. See, that's really interesting for something that doesn't have a window box. Like that seems just unnecessary. Like this seems like a waste of like ink. So we have our instructions, and then we have the figure. And it's in a uh, form-fitted plastic tray. It's in there pretty tight. Let's go ahead and <clears throat> cut the tape. So, it's got tape on four sides. And and I always appreciate this. I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. There is a clear plastic film on here to protect the figure from rubbing uh, and potentially getting stuff marks on the figure during transport from the factory, through customs, to a distributor, and then eventually to your house. All right. Um, no zip ties. I'm not a big fan of zip ties, especially for adult collectors. There, look at this. Each leg is individually bagged to prevent scuff marks. And it comes in robot mode. Not the most efficient way to pack something because it takes up more space. You have a bigger package. 
but it comes out of the box ready to go. All right, so my opinions of the figure aside, seems a little flimsy right off the bat. I don't know. Seems a little flimsy. All right. So let's put this away and then compare it to our hot rod. But first, a nice Pinot. Now, either I dropped a piece or mine only came with one sword. Nope, it's over here. False alarm. All right, so this is a, this is an older piece. It's a 2019 as of this recording. This is a official uh, Takara Masterpiece uh, Hot Rod reissue. This comes in different colors. It's got uh, the Target Master. This is a different Target Master than the one that came with the Target Master Rodimus, which was a, a US exclusive. I actually got the help on the development of that one. So this is a more flat box. It doesn't have the silky feel to it, but the image of the toy is embossed. It's an image of the toy and not artwork. So HazTac tends to put stuff when it's in window boxes in robot mode. Carded, they tend to go in vehicle mode, but non-window boxes to save money, usually, usually, Vehicle mode is the way to go. So we've cut the tape. We're going to flip our blade and push it against the flap to help us open it so we don't create a crease here in the flap. Sometimes with some packages, it just pops open. Others need a little bit of love. This also prevents not just getting the crease here, but folding these parts here or ripping them as you try to pull them out. I hate that. It's, it's a pet peeve. All right, so this is a plastic tray, and we know that starting in 2020, Hasbro and most likely Takara will be going to plastic less inserts, so cardboard inserts. So we have the figure, it's in a form fitted uh, tray. It's in there tight, it's in there very tight, and it is taped shut. Now, uh, sometimes these are called clamshells. That's uh, more of an industry term. I'm not a big fan of the, of the plastic inserts that completely fit around, the, the top fit, fits completely around the bottom. I like the ones where they just kind of like fit and there's a, li a lip that goes around it. I just think those are easier to manage. All right, so we released our figure. So very typical of Haztac is that there is no plastic film on this at all to protect it from scuff marks. Although I will say it is very tight in there. There is like no wiggle room. So it's really tight in there. Even the Target Master is pretty tight in there. See, this is the problem when you have uh, a lid that completely covers the bottom. Sometimes it's a little tricky to put back together. All right, so, oh, wine. <sighs> yes, excellent, there must always be wine. Instructions sealed. There's a card with the Hasbro one, with the Takara one, as usual. Oh, see, this is what I don't like. So I was pretty dismissive of the instructions for the DNA design figure. The look on the back. There's an alternate face and accessories. If I hadn't just lifted this up to put it to the side, I never would have seen that. This type of stuff belongs in the plastic tray or taped underneath the plastic tray. Just my opinion. I mean, I used to work in the industry, what do I know? All right, so we've talked about the bludgeon. 
we've talked about the hot rod. So that's comparing a third party to an official release. And uh, I have this. This is the Planix X uh, PX20. This is the War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron inspired ratchet. So this can kind of fit between that masterpiece Voyager Chug Generations world. So we'll use this to compare. Just to compare one more. All right. So there is no tape on it. That's fine. It, it is a third party item. So I don't necessarily know that tape is needed on the outside, but I do like Planet X boxes. It's a picture of the figure. It's obviously been photoshopped a little bit. Uh, it is a very silky box. It's got a silky like matte finish to it. That's what I mean by that. Take my blade and I turn it so that the cutting side is facing away from the side that I'm applying pressure because I don't want to crease the box. I want to keep this box in nice shape. So look, I start with one side and then I do the other. So I'll put this back. I don't try and lift the whole flap up at once. I do one side and then the other, but you know what, man? These are your toys. You open them however you want to open them. If you want to open them and throw the box away, that's your choice, man. No one should be allowed to tell you what to do with your toys. Instructions. All right, so it comes in a clamshell. This appears to be the same shell as the Ironhide version. It makes sense that it would be the same shell, very generic shell. There seems to be a little bit more space in here because there are a few uh, parts that are retooled. On the back, the accessories are taped, as they should be, rather than putting them in a bag with instructions. So let me go ahead, take the accessories out. You know, with, with most things, uh, the accessory bags, you know, you want to keep all the, some people like me want to keep everything together, like all the package and the twist ties together. Um, but sometimes, especially with these bags, they're going to rip if you, if you try to pull the tape off. And, uh, if you cut the tape, you know, you can't reseal it again. So th these are kind of like you open it, it's a one and done type of deal. But I like to display my, my third party figures. I don't buy them to keep them in the package. I buy them because I want to play with them. And I think that is a fundamental difference between official stuff and third party stuff. So with official stuff, I buy two of each, always. One to keep in the package and one to open. And I don't open one until I have two sealed ones that I can compare and contrast for variations. With third party, I'm buying it because I need that figure loose, because I need to physically handle that figure. And it, I'm, I'm not buying it for its collectability. And I don't even like to use that word. I'm buying it because there's a hole in, on my shelf and that figure accurately represents the silhouette of the item that should be in that hole. It's a very long-winded way of saying I like it. All right, so this is a, is a clamshell as well, but this one has the, has the buttons in it to keep the two halves together because this is not a clamshell that fits over the lip. This is one that sandwiches the figure. And what I always appreciate by fans for fans, there are plastic strips on painted pieces to avoid any scuff marks during transportation from the factory, to your customs, to your distributor, to your house. And voila, beautiful, right? It's a beautiful bouquet. Uh, yeah. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. 
Well, that's it for today's Cut the Tape. Thank you for joining me. I do like these compare and contrast videos rather than, hey, let's just open something for the, for the sake of opening. There's a time and a place for that. But I like the comparing stuff. So thank you very much for joining me on another episode of Cut the Tape.